please the court. This is an unusual case. We have probably more 4246 cases in the Eastern District of North Carolina than anywhere because of the presence of the Medical Center at Butner. And I know I've been handling them for years. This is an unusual position, though, in that we went into the last hearing with everybody pretty much on the same page. Everybody agreed it was time for Don Snyder to go home to Maryland. The only disagreement was are we going to make it a conditional release or an unconditional release. And two psychiatrists testified. One for the government said that the release, Dr. Herbal said that the release should be conditional. And he explained why. And Dr. Rogers from Duke said that she thought the release should be unconditional. And she explained why. The remedy that you seek here today is for him to be put on unconditional release. On unconditional release. That's right. So he's been on conditional release just for nearly a year now. Tomorrow will be 11 months and he has his own apartment, his own car, and a job. So is there not some vehicle for you to go to the district court and says, well, you put him on conditional release. I'm going to move that it be modified or terminated from this. There is indeed. There is indeed. Does that basis exist? And would it exist based upon what you just said? He's got his own car. He's got his apartment. And does that exist now? Well, we're going to do that. That's the next. When can you do it? Sir? When can you do it? You have to wait at least 180 days from the previous hearing. That's past. And we're already past that. Have you done it? No, sir. We have not. Well, because the case is here now. Well, but even if it's here, that's a whole different remedy. What we're going to determine is whether he should have been put there in the first instance, not whether he should be kept. I mean, there's a motion proceeding. After 180 days, you can file a motion. That's right. And what is, is that based upon how he has conducted himself in that 180 days? That's right. And you are telling me his conduct has been exemplary during that. There's been no infractions or anything of that? Not at all. Not at all. It's frankly surpassed all of our expectations. And so he looks like he is entitled to this relief on this motion. Well, I hope so. But you haven't asked for it. We will. As soon as we get out of this court, we're going to. But I mean, I can't figure that one out. I'm trying, Mr. Craven. I'm just thinking of the practical. He is entitled. He's been there for 180 days. I know you want to prove a point. He shouldn't have been there in the first instance. Yeah. But he's trying to go. He's not interested in your point you're trying to prove. He's trying to get out on unconditional release. I would think that's what he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. He's not interested in the academic side of this thing. Well, he's still complaining about the 38 days that he spent there that he shouldn't have had to. I'm sure he will complain about it, but you're not going to get a remedy on that. What you're seeking is a remedy to get him on unconditional. Right. He's been there. You tell me in 180 days you can ask for this. Of course, you get the annual yearly report that comes, I think, from somebody does that. Yeah. Now, we don't have that yet. You haven't gotten that. We don't have that yet. But in 180 days, his conduct has been exemplary. It meets everything that looks like a motion. I'm not saying it would or would not. But I don't understand if he wants to get out that bad, why in the world would he not have filed a motion by now? And I know it would have made this matter moot. I believe that in my heart. Oh, if he were still in custody, we would have. But he no longer has the electronic monitor. He does have to ask the probation officer in Baltimore for permission to leave the state. He had talked about coming down here today, and I talked him out of it. I said, you're just going to make me more nervous. He's pretty free, is what you're saying. He is. He is. He is. He is indeed. It's really minimal stuff you're asking for now. That's right. That's right. Why won't you go back to the district court and say, I'm going to. I mean, you could have saved our time today if you'd done that, don't you think? I'm going to. I'm going to. And Judge Britt knows I'm coming. And you just might do that soon and might file something back up here before we write this opinion and say, oh, this thing is moot because he's now out. You're giving me ideas here. I am? You gave it to me. You said 180 days you could ask for it. I told you at the outset this is an unusual case. I've been knowing you a long time. You're a very smart man. I didn't give you this idea. 
Well, I am concerned about the 38-day situation. You know, it really bothered me. It bothered me that at the, on March 12th, there wasn't a soul there in the courtroom or at, some of us were out at Butner, it was on television before Judge Britt, but there wasn't a soul involved in the case on March 12th who thought that Don Snyder was still dangerous. And yet- Judge Britt is not the toughest judge in America when it comes to just being unreasonable. No. Pretty reasonable person. Absolutely. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. It's a very unusual case to me that you would have to go and I mean, it just seems to me, if you went back to Judge Britt on this thing and, and went, told him about the 180 days, that's a good shot. He might say, okay. Well, I think there, I think there is, and, and that's exactly what we're going to do next. Separate and apart from that, you seem to be suggesting in this case that we have before us that the fact that everybody agreed that uh, your client should have been released, that that should have happened instantaneously. And well, that's can't be the case. Nobody, nobody believed at that moment that he was dangerous. But the, the, the two psychiatrists made it clear. Neither one of them believed he was dangerous. And yet Judge Britt, for procedural reasons, I mean, I'm, I'm hypothesizing this, he didn't explain it, uh, he entered an order saying that Don Snyder is still dangerous and that his release would pose a danger to others. Nobody believed that at that time. That's why I call it a gimmick keep him in custody, and the government bristled when I used that word gimmick, and maybe I shouldn't have used it, but 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 that's why I called it that. What gimmick was it? Well, I guess it was the courts, really. Judge uh, Britt had a gimmick <laughs> to keep him in court. <laughs> uh, how else was he gonna, how else could you keep him locked up for 38 days? And you know, I made the point in the brief well, that- he could have well, done it because he thought it was dangerous. On what basis? There was absolutely zero evidence that he was dangerous. Both doctors testified that he was ready for release. And he released him. He just put so where, where did on. Where did Judge Brick get the idea that he was still dangerous? Well, he, he released him, but he put just put conditions on it. I mean, that sounds like it's kind of a well, and a uh, lot of it going away. He says, "We're not going to keep you here." A lot of it, but you you're here on a very serious situation, and we're just not, we, you know, there, there's some factual stuff here that your client is, is you know, he, he's not as exemplary in his conduct not, throughout his lifetime. He's not the poster child and from so Alabama. Judge Britt is a seasoned judge, and he's looking at this situation, and he says, well, it's got, I'm going to sort of cut this baby, and we're going to let you go, and we'll put a few conditions on it. 180 days, you can come back with this well, motion, and you can show, boom, I mean, I, that sounds like it's a reasonable contemplation. You waited almost 360 days, right. twice the period of time, and it just seems like what the forecast was, what you're saying is that we're going to let him go on condition, bring it back in 180 days, and that might just happen. Well, I think we've accomplished. But you didn't give him a chance to I do that. We, I think we've accomplished something in the 11 months, uh, and I think we're probably better off now than we would have been on the 181st day because you we say accomplished something. Your your client has now demonstrated. He's that. demonstrated 11 months. Oh, so it's been good for him. I think it has been. And in, in, well, Judge Britt did a good thing then. Well, <laughs> Judge Britt did. <laughs> you could argue that he did a good thing in making it conditional. You just it, told it, me it, he it, did. You uh, said you've accomplished no, no, something in those no, 11 months. I've known months. you a long time too now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it. it it concerns me. I, I think some of the delay, frankly, was for the convenience of the Bureau of Prisons. Uh, the, but do you have any evidence? Yeah, we do. The letter from the chief, from the probation officer in Baltimore, was dated March 16, and it was replying to the Bureau of Prisons' uh, request that they bless and approve the the conditions. And the letter, which is in the record, uh, says that, that since we got your request, and we don't know the date of the request, but common sense tells us it had to have been before the March 12 hearing that the Bureau of Prisons sent the letter to the probation office in Baltimore. And that office, on March 16, four days after the hearing, wrote a letter to the BOP saying, we approve the, the release plan. We, we, we like it, and we've looked into it, and we've been to Hagerstown, and we've uh, talked to the brother and done this and done that, and, went, and you have our approval for that release plan. Uh, it was then, 
another three weeks until april the fifth before the b o p filed that release plan that they at that time had full approval on from everybody that they want to prove from and they're not required to get the approval of the probation office i i heard judge britt wants to tell a probation officer you know he said miss son so don't take this the wrong way i'm not asking you to supervise him i'm telling you to supervise him but nonetheless the b o p pardon well oh i was for it but but the b o p uh uh after they got the report from the probation officer of Baltimore saying that we approved the plan completely it, it took them then three weeks to get it from Butner to Raleigh which is you know 30 minutes as we know uh, even if we assume all of that is true I mean that we don't have a claim for damages in front of us so I don't know what the remedy would be in this case. I, I don't either I don't either uh, I, and I just I don't want this 38 day problem to happen to somebody down the line again so you're, you're, you're you're firing a shot across the bow at the uh, future litigants? I think it was done for the convenience of the BOP. And it's Judge not a class action. You're dealing with your client. He's I know. The only person that cares about this right now is the current person who's on this condition of right. release. And I, you know, we, we've sort of gone back and forth on it, but I am really having a hard time why, given what you're saying, he has not sought to be released well, by the remedy that's available to him more so than coming here. Well, it, it was for him because we're not going to make decisions for everybody. Yeah, out there. It, it, it wasn't available to him on April 20 last year when we filed the notice of appeal or when we filed the briefs. It is available now, but it wasn't available. At the, I think even at the time the briefs were filed. But yes, it's available now, uh, and and I think Judge Britt should have ordered his release unconditionally. Uh, on March the 12th, uh, in keeping with, uh, uh, as Dr. Rogers uh, uh, testified, should be the case. And I think, I, I know Dr. Rogers and Dr. It, it, I also know, I know both doctors well. I've known them both for years and I like both of them. But I think Dr. Rogers' approach was the, the better reasoned of the two. And, uh, and I think Judge Britt should have accepted it. And I hope this court will. Uh, I wasn't kidding when I said it was an unusual case. I see. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Clear. Thank you. Um, Ms. Dano. Good morning, Your Honors. May it please the court, my name is Jennifer Daniels, and I represent the United States, the appellee in this case. The district court's ruling or finding that Mr. Snyder continued to meet criteria for civil commitment under 18 U.S.C. 4246 should be affirmed. First, when the motion is filed by Mr. Craven over there after 180 days, he makes all these statements about last 180 days he's just been exemplary. What will be your counter evidence to that to say no, he should remain on conditional release? We'd have to figure out what the evidence is. I have not yet received- Any evidence whatsoever that would indicate anything come to you, any reports, the kind of stuff that you would normally think he's, he's violated again, he's done some other stuff, anything like that? To date, we have no report saying that he's violated. Um, however, as Mr. Um, Craven of indicated, would be the evidence that you would present that that you think would be sufficient to say keep him on condition. What type of evidence would that be? We usually would present the probation officer's annual update, which is due in April, so next month. Um, depending on what the probation officer reported, if Mr. Snyder what is, does he have to report to, that would convince you he needs to stay on it. Um, perhaps if he's not continuously taking his medication as prescribed. Um, maybe he... Continually, if he's continually taking medication, you don't have that, what else you got? Well, there, there are a number of factors that, that so would I'm be considered. i figure this out. Sure. I, give me some idea. Well, I mean, just general. Okay. What, what type of evidence would say he has to stay, given what we're dealing with, he mm -hmm. has to stay on condition. You'd go in and fight this thing tooth and nail mm -hmm. to get him to do that. 
Now, I know one type of, if he made other threats and stuff. That's right. You don't have any evidence of that. At this point, we do not have any evidence, but hes it's certainly not unheard of that he could have made some threats. I would have, but I won't know, do you have anything that's come to your office whatsoever to indicate otherwise? I realize could have, mm -hmm. and, 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 and but if there isn't, and Mr. Craven knows this, you've got to be looking like I am over here right now, wondering why didn't he ask for this guy to be out? Well, no offense to Mr. Craven, but I would I would expect more um, evidence than than what he just tells us. Again, the pr the report from the probation right officer. Now from your perspective, right. your perspective. Do you so so basically you don't know anything that's out there. There's nothing that's come to your attention, but it could come. But you don't know of anything. That's correct. But we would also um, ask the court to appoint or, or appoint on our own on a forensic evaluator to meet with Mr. Snyder, um, somebody who's actually trained in giving these types of forensic opinions. Um, I can't say whether or not, um, based on my own, you know, I can't say whether Mr. Snyder continues to pose a substantial risk of physical threat or, or serious damage to property. That he, at, in May, was it March 12th when he was released? What was the evidence that he continued to pose that threat? There is substantial evidence that he continues to pose a substantial threat from Dr. Herbal, the FMC evaluator. Um, the experts in this case did not completely agree, and Judge Britt did not just pull out a thin air that Mr. Snyder continued to pose a threat. The, um, Dr. Herbal testified that Mr. Snyder suffers from a very severe mental illness, and despite being heavily medicated, this is not an illness that was simply gonna go away. He was gonna to continue to have these manic cycles and, and, and repeat the behavior that he's exhibited in the past. Mr. Snyder has also been charged on at least two occasions of threatening the President of the United States. On one occasion, when he was arrested in 2001, he was placed in a police cruiser and became so agitated that he actually kicked out the window of the, of the cruiser. Um, on another occasion, when Mr. Snyder was actually conditionally released back in 2008, it was within a week. Mr. Snyder showed up at a bar, which he was not supposed to be at. But it seems that the recommendation of Dr. Herbal alone is sufficient to indicate there is substantial evidence for the district court judge to have made the decision that he made. Isn't that enough by itself? I mean, you could have all the other evidence from mm -hmm. another doctor, Dr. Rogers, whomever, going totally the other way, but if Dr. Herbal suggested this, that he poses this particular risk, mm -hmm. doesn't that alone, isn't that enough? It is. Um, Judge Britt had before him. Do you need to say anything more beyond that? I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here, because right. if you got two doctors, and one is clearly a basis upon which the district court can rely upon, do you need anything more? I would say not. Um, it was certainly within Judge Britt's um, authority to, to credit Dr. Herbal over Dr. Rogers. And that's exactly what he did. Um, so at the time of the hearing in March of 2012, the option of a conditional release wasn't presented before Judge Britt. There was no conditional release plan in place yet. So his options were to find that he continued to meet criteria or that he could be unconditionally released back into the community. And that was certainly not Dr. Herbal's opinion, that he should be released without conditions. Um, if there's no further questions from the bench, the government rests on its written brief and respect, respectfully requests that the district court decision be affirmed. Thank you very much. I do have another minute. Certainly, yes. If yes. I may, before I get back to Durham and file that motion for the judge. Uh, <laughs> Tell us about Dr. Herbal. <laughs> the, hearing, the hearing was on March 12th. Uh, four days later, and th that was the day Judge Britt found him still dangerous. Four days later, March 16, uh, the BOP receives from the probation office in Baltimore their approval of the, the release plan. Uh, from March 16 to April 5th, nothing happens. That's a period of 19 days. Then, then the conditional release plan is filed. Judge Britt signed it that same day. So Judge Britt found Don Snyder dangerous on March 12th, but not dangerous on April 5th, 24 days later. What happened in those 24 days? Not a blessed thing. 
except the BOP got with the paperwork. Down in 180 days. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I, I still don't know. I, I'm gonna. I, Judge Britt a hard time about those. I'm actions, gonna. But you waited 180 days and you've done. Nothing. Well, but as I said, at the time I filed the notice of appeal, and at the, even at the time the, this case was briefed, the 180 days hadn't passed. It's passed now. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm got. I'm going home and file that motion. Your client might like that. <laughs> Mr. Craven, may I ask you a question before you? Yes, go? sir. And I appreciate your your, your candor and, and uh, with the court, and uh, it's been a good exchange in terms. Of, these are very difficult cases, as you know. Sure. I'm in these cases with Buckner, and, and appreciate your your work as your court appointed. As I will later. I can incorporate it now. We thank you for your court appointed work here. Um, the question is, I have just a maybe a technical question, and that is this. Given your your uh, your representations to the court, and in, in, in terms of what this situation is now, how much of your case now is left? Is it moot now that in the sense that he is in effect unconditionally released now? No, he's not unconditionally released. So now. he still has some oh, things that you'd like to be removed. Yeah, he's still on conditional release. Okay, all right. So. And, and, and will be uh, really indefinitely. But the monitoring is gone. You mentioned. Uh, the, the electronic monitor is off. He still has to report to the probation officer uh, periodically. I'm not sure how often. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, he has to get permission to leave the state. So, the, so if he's unconditionally released, he would have no active monitoring. He wouldn't at all. have any more conditions on him than you or I do. Okay. So, so everybody's comfortable that he can self-medicate without problem. Well. I, I, I imagine so. As, as Ms. Daniels indicated, we don't have the annual report yet yeah. from the probation office in Baltimore. That'll be due uh, a month from tomorrow. Uh, the fact that I have, the fact that, I mean, that probation officer knows my, he's got my phone number. If, if something bad had happened, I, I would know about it. And, and all I hear is good stuff from Don Snyder and his brother and you're right, this is an unusual case. Another irony, too, I know that with Dr. Rogers, part of it, what she said, was that uh, she didn't think that he would probably be able to comply with condition, but he's proven right. that he can. That's right. He, he really, the, he surpassed all our expectations. Yes, I noticed that. Yeah. Uh, I, I still talked him out of coming today, though. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank question? you, sir. Thank you so much for, again, we know, thank you so much for your help to the court. Ms. Daniels, as well, is representing the United States. Uh, and with that, we're going to come down Greek Council. We'll first ask our esteemed deputy to dismiss us for the day. This honorable court stands adjourned until tomorrow morning at 9.30. Godspeed, United States, and this honorable court.